Lynn Arnett, double gender Lynn name, and I've been dealing with that all my life. But before I tell you anything about my uh, Navy background, let me share a little bit about my family background, which will help bring you to why I joined the Navy in the first place. My grandfather served in World War I, and he was a land sailor. He never got on a ship. But at the same time, he served honorably for four years. Uh, my father served, uh, he was born in 1910, and uh, he served from 1928 to 1932, when he was 18 to 22 years of age. And then he was honorably discharged. But when the war broke out in December 7, 1941, when Pearl Harbor was attacked, my father went down in January to re-enlist. And they told him he was too old, he was 31 years of age. So, uh, and the war wouldn't last that long, that's what he was told. So instead, he, uh, he, had, he went and joined the Merchant Marines and he served for uh, four years, two trips to London and two trips to Sydney, Australia on a freighter haul, hauling ammunition. So I'm lucky to be here because a lot of the ships didn't make it. Um, I was uh, 19 years of age. It was uh, 1963. And um, I decided at that time I wanted to join the Navy because uh, it was an honorable thing to do. It had been a family tradition and I felt that it was a responsibility plus it was also an honor to uh, go into the service. I chose a Navy because it was a family tradition. Uh, but I wanted to go to sea, and my disappointment was I never got to sea. It's like my grandfather, I never got a chance to go to sea. Um, but we ended up on the, uh, San Diego is where I did my basic training, and it was in 1963, uh, end of 63. And uh, one of the things I had learned from my father was when we would go deer hunting and target practicing, I was fairly handy with a pistol. And uh, that became evident uh, in basic training, and so they told me to stand aside show up at 700 hours tomorrow morning and do that again. So about four of us were picked to uh, continue on the pistol range. And at the end of about two weeks of training, they said, uh, you're not gonna go to sea, you're gonna be in security unit. So I went to Skaggs Island, which is no longer an active security base, but it's in uh, the north end of the Bay Area, up by Vallejo. And I went to uh, training there, it's a security, top security base. And I was uh, privileged and it was an honor to go. I learned a great deal. Thought I had, th thought I had uh, knowledge of everything when I was 19 and 20 years of age. I learned very quickly that I had a lot to learn. Um, but it was an honor. And I served uh, in the security unit. I never saw battle action, but I signed up to go to Vietnam. And I have to tell you that uh, the reason I did that, it was the only way I was going to get a chance to get on a ship. And a lieutenant told me that I would make $72 more per month if I went to sea and went to Vietnam. So I was 20 years of age and I signed up. And, uh, but they, they preferred to fly me everywhere. I flew all across the country many times. Our job was to bring back AWOLs. Uh, back before computers and before technology, a lot of men who had served 18 or 20, 25 years, they had a lot of information. And when they'd go into a bar and have too many drinks, they may have say the wrong thing. So security's job was to prevent that information from leaking out into the general public. Again, this is during Vietnam years. So it was top, sec top secure. And so we'd bring them back, and my job was to do a lot of paperwork and get, their, uh, get them into court. And if it was their first honest mistake, my job was to try and protect their benefits because everybody makes a mistake. And so for me, it was a, a challenge to try and get them to, and, I'd always tell them that this is not an interrogation, it's an interview, unless you lie to me, and then it becomes an interrogation, and uh, we can't save your benefits. A lot of times these guys would have 15 or 20 years of benefits, and so my role was to try and prepare them for court so that they could be, um, remain in the service and keep their benefits. Um, <clears throat> there was one case where we went out on a call, and a guy did not want to go back. He was uh, resistant to arrest. Um, we brought him back anyway. The, the joke was that if you, if you resist, you're just going to come back tired because we're going to bring you back anyway. So we had a lot of uh, challenges because during Vietnam time, there was a lot of guys that did go AWOL. And uh, rightfully so, they were concerned about their careers, but at the same time, they had a responsibility to this country. And when you're in the, whether it's the Army, Air Force, Navy, Marines, Coast Guard, doesn't matter, when you sign on, uh, you become the property of the military and you have an obligation of two years, four years or, and I right now I'm in the Band of Brothers here locally, and we have some gentlemen who have served 30 and 38 years. 
Um, so that's, for me, it's a real honor to serve with men who um, did see action. Uh, we have still have a number of World War II fellows in this community um, that are with us. And uh, to me, it's a privilege to be around them um, and serve back into the community. I think one of the reasons that I am excited about being a member of the Band of Brothers here locally is because I survived my time in the service and I have two friends on the Vietnam Wall that I served with. So in honor of them and others that didn't come home and or those who came home missing arms and limbs, and we have a lot of them in this community, uh, for me it's an honor and a privilege to give back to this community by serving veterans. Uh, we have a lot of young men coming back from Afghanistan. Some came back from Iraq, they have PTSD. We have one who will remain nameless, obviously, that sat up all night with a nine millimeter because he couldn't, he couldn't handle it. We got him into counseling, that was two years ago, and he's with us today. So helping those that are coming home today, to me, is quite, uh, it's a responsibility. It's also an honor for us to be able to bring them back into society. Um, we have a lot of gentlemen of Korea War and Vietnam and uh, World War II now that we're saying goodbye to. And um, I was in the Honor Guard for three years. I went to 51 funerals. And I have to tell you this, that it's uh, whether even, even if you don't know the fella that's now going to rest, it wears on you. Um, but it was an honor to be there for the families that are saying goodbye to their brother, their husband, and whoever. So that was something I did for three years with the Band of Brothers. And I served as vice president of the Band of Brothers for two years. My term was up and I chose not to run because I was, frankly, I was at the age where I was getting tired more easily. I also had back surgery this year, which uh, was part of the reason I had to back away a little bit. But I'm 100% again and I count my blessings on a daily basis. At my age now, I look back on my military time. I look back on uh, some of the fellows that I mentioned earlier that, that I became close to when I was in security training and they didn't come back. We had one fellow that went out on a AWOL call and he didn't come back. So, you know, we, we look at our military today quite differently in this country, which I think is a beautiful thing because we've matured as a nation. Um, I recall being spit on when I was in uniform in San, San Diego, and again in San Francisco. Uh, had bottles thrown at us because we were in Vietnam. And even though I wasn't in Vietnam, I represented those that were because I was in a Navy uniform. Um, so I see our military today being uh, respected, treated well, and honored um, when they come back home. Uh, and I think that's one of, the re one of the beautiful things what I've seen as our country has grown into respect of our military. Uh, from 1966 when I got out of the service until about 1990, I never talked about my service because uh, nobody wanted to hear about it in the first place and secondly is I was concerned about what the reaction would be since I served during a time when we had a uh, unpopular war. And you got to remember that Vietnam was the first war this country's ever had that was on television every night. Uh, World War II didn't have that. It was a newspaper and you'd get the news two or three days later. Uh, but we saw body bags on TV every night during Vietnam. So those that served in Vietnam uh, and came home, they were not well received. I sit next to them on Thursday mornings at the Elks and the Banner Brothers, a lot of the guys, and um, they're proud now that they serve their country. So it's been a complete circle that, that I've seen that we've come back to. Uh, my service, um, and I told Ramona this before she asked me to do the interview, um, why don't you interview somebody that saw battle action? Uh, battle action, I guess, is not a priority. It's those who have served, so it's an honor for me to do this this morning. Um, I did what I was told. I saluted. I learned to do things uh, that I didn't want to do. Um, I went out on calls a couple, three, four times that were um, uh, violent, but uh, only one time did I have a gun aimed at me, and um, he lost his benefits when we brought him back to court. But um, it was, for me, a growing experience. My dad told me when I came home after uh, my service time, you're 15 years older, although I didn't serve 15 years. He said, in maturity, you're 15 years older. And I think the service, regardless of branch, is um, a real opportunity for anyone to uh, wrap their arms around this country uh, and what it stands for, uh, the Constitution. Uh, I think this community is, is a great community because, <clears throat> and we moved here when we retired, my wife and I, 
Um, it's very patriotic. You see the flags out on Veterans Day and Fourth of July and Memorial Day. Uh, you see the community uh, really behind the veterans. I joined the Band of Brothers in September of 2011. I was number 59. I was, um, yes, last Thursday I found out we have 717 members here in Crook County that are members of the Band of Brothers. Um, and what do they do? Basically, we give back to the community. We're helping the vets, like I mentioned before. We're building ramps for guys that are in wheelchairs now. We're picking up prescription drugs for men that can't drive any longer because they have macular degeneration and their wife has passed away. So we're, we're doing a lot of those, those uh, benefits for the community. Uh, 717 is an astounding number for a population of 25,000 per capita wise. Uh, there's a lot of great stories from those that have served and I hear them all. Uh, we have one gentleman that um, this very close friend of mine that uh, survived Vietnam. Uh, two gunshots, bayonet in the stomach. Um, and he's uh, 70 years of age today. He doesn't talk about it with other people. He will, his close friends. Um, but he survived. And I think that's the beautiful thing. I know that PTSD is a household word now. Uh, my father came home from World War II. He had PTSD. Nobody knew what it was. Um, but he, he survived that and built a business. Um, a lot of people in the Korea War and Vietnam War, we didn't know what PTSD was. We called it battle fatigue or shell shock. Um, but it sometimes lingers. I've got a very close friend that flew 107 missions in a F-4 fighter jet in the Air Force in Vietnam. To this day, he has screaming fits once every three or four months. Uh, used to be weekly. Uh, so I think our knowledge of what men and women go through when they serve this country has grown. I think the way we treat our veterans um, has become a beautiful thing rather than something to be ashamed of. And I think our knowledge has grown on the value of service. And you know, from my perspective, when I served in the Navy, um, I didn't have my college behind me at that time, and when I came home I did. But what I've learned is that nothing really matters whether it's whatever program or whatever political position people might take really doesn't matter unless you have a military to defend the liberties and freedoms that we've enjoyed for 240 years now. Um, my position at my age now is I want to preserve that for my kids and my grandchildren and yes I do have a great granddaughter now. So those generations I think should be blessed with the continuation of knowledge about not only the founding of this country, the preservation of this country, the beautiful thing of the liberty and the freedom. Uh, nobody's climbing walls to get out of this country. They're trying to come into this country. And that's because we have a lot to offer and we need to protect that for the next generations. Uh, I think service is a beautiful thing. I don't think it should be mandatory. I think it should be voluntary. I think it should be um, respected. And I think people should uh, look at it as an opportunity right in this community. And you probably know this as well. There's been a lot of students from Kirk County High School that have gone into the service. They've come back and they've benefited greatly with their education and their military service. So I think it's a beautiful thing. I look back on my service, I'd do it again. I'd serve this country again. Um, I'd pick the Navy again, but we like to tease one another on Thursday mornings because everyone feel, feels that their branch is the best. Well, guess what? They're different uniforms, but they're the same team. We have ladies that have served honorably and they're in the Band of Brothers. We still call it Brothers. Um, we have World War II all the way to Afghanistan. We have people that pushed pencils. We have people that went through the jungles of Vietnam. Um, the most common denominator that we have is an honorable discharge. Uh, nobody really cares how many medals people have or whether they saw battle or not. It's they served the country. And they came home and after they came home, they tried to rebuild their lives. And I think that's one of the things that Prineville stands out for, is helping people when they come back. We've got the Legionnaires, we've got the BFW, we've got uh, the Band of Brothers, and we have service organizations from Seropolis to Rotary and Qantas that do a lot of good to helping this community. And I believe that the Band of Brothers help a great deal in providing that. Had it not been from a military experience, I'd have gone to college, uh, I would have lost a lot of uh, opportunities. Um, I know that when I've interviewed for jobs, when I, when I was out of the service, one of the first questions was, do you have a copy of your military records? 
And I think that's real imperative for people to know that you served honorably. So uh, I would uh, close by saying that to me, I would recommend the military to uh, any young person. I would suggest to you that uh, it's an honor, it's a privilege, and it's an opportunity to give back to the country, not only while you're in the service, but uh, when you come home. I do have to tell you though, uh, a little humor, is I had been in the service for a year and a half and I came home for holidays, Christmas time, and my mother met me at the door with an envelope and it was from the waves. Back in the 60s, the waves were separate from the male navy. Women served separately. And it was from the waves and it was inviting me to come down and explore an opportunity to serve my country in the waves because my first name is Lynn. And so, being a smart young man, 20 years of age, I put on my dress white uniform and I went down to the WAVES headquarters and I asked him if I, was, I could fill out the paperwork and I was there for my physical. And they did not have a sense of humor. But my point being is that we have grown even when women serve with men now, honorably. And I know when I was working years after uh, my service, uh, I was hired, I was doing the hiring for the United Way, because I worked for United Way for 32 years. And uh, one lady came in and she had flown a, a chopper in Iraq. And um, of course she was hired because she had a lot of other credentials plus her college degree. But the point is is that women can do 98% of all of the jobs that are in the military in my opinion as well or better than men in many cases. And the only other 2% are there's some areas where, the, where they have, the government has elected to keep them separate for whatever reasons. But when I served um, in the 60s, women were not serving alongside men. And I think that's another reason that we have grown as a nation, because they do now have the many opportunities. They have the responsibility, in my opinion, but they also have the opportunities now, and they're showing that they can serve just as well, if not better in many capacities, than, the, than their male co counterparts. So um, to me, it's an honor, and I would encourage everyone to uh, consider that. My Navy career, um, I don't think I was 15 years more mature, but my dad did at the time. Um, but it was an honor for me to serve this country. My name's Lynn.